go. Al Horn, how are you? El Horn, yeah. Don't know what that was all about. <laughs> Tom El Horn. Yes. El Horn. What's been uh what's been going on, mate? Mate, a lot of been lot lot of been. A lot of been. Uh lots been happening. Where do you want me to start, brother? Um let's talk about Unrivaled. Cool, man. And what's been going on there? Uh Unrivaled is uh Going amazing, mate. So just yeah. to uh, give you an update, uh, we're doing some DNA testing, matching nutritional and physical programs to people's DNA. Absolutely loving it. Uh, expanding really fast. Um, uh, had some staff members, got rid of some staff members. Yeah. Got some new staff members. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're slowly growing. Uh, I've got an event coming up in May uh, where we're really digging deep into hormones and how they affect your moods, your sex, your sleep, your energy, uh, your how you burn and store body mm. fat. So that's coming up in May. Um, otherwise, do just uh, going through the motions. It's super busy with the startup. So we've been doing this now for about a year. Yep. So it's still in that startup phase, just absolutely under the pump, but loving it. Yep. Um, it's just such an exciting time. It's amazing how, how much more energy you seem to have when you're working on something that, that truly means something to you, you know, mm. and you, you have that sense of fulfillment. Like... I don't know. Do you, do you think you'd be able to put this much time and energy into it if it was something that just paid the bills? Oh no, dude. Yeah, dude. If it was, if it was something just to pay the bills, like you'd go get a job, uh, work a nine to five where you'd have you know constant income, mm. you'd have security, and you could switch off at five o'clock. Mm. Mm. You know, and, and you'd just run that race. And there's nothing bad about that race. It's just sort of not for me. Yeah. Um. I don't see the point in. It's very hard for me to align myself with someone else's vision. We can have similar visions, but ultimately uh, many people are running or climbing a different mountain. Mm. And it doesn't matter which path you take, as long as you and your business partner or you and your relationship with whoever that is with is climbing the same mountain. Mm. Uh, It doesn't matter what path you take. But so I find it very hard if I was going to work with someone uh, or, you know, into another company working a nine to five or something like that. We're just climbing two different mountains, we're mm. on a different path. So, uh, man, I love doing what I do and it's really interesting. Just recently, I'm like, you know, uh, am I truly, truly fulfilled? Mm. Because it's different from when I owned the gym. You used to see the transformations happening in front of you. Yeah. And now I've got clients all around the world and um, one of my clients just recently lost 18 kilo. Fucking um, hell. Wow. Man, now, nice. Yeah, absolutely. He's mm. added, you know, 10 years to his life, mm. right? And that's amazing. Uh, I've got uh, postmenopausal women losing 10 to 15 kilo. Um, we've got uh, women in their sort of early 30s uh, dropping just under 15 kilo to have babies. Mm. Like it's literally changing people's lives. And I had this reflection the other day that I was still hungry for more. Mm-hmm. And, you know, testimonials are fantastic. And I get these before and after photos and all of that. And it's just what was it, what I had to get over the fact is I, you know, Perry was amazing for me. She's like, you're literally changing people's lives. Mm. But because I wasn't seeing them every single day, like I did in the gym, mm. you would, you didn't, well, I didn't think I was doing my job correctly. I'm mm. like, well, what else can I do? What else can I do? And I'll give and I'll give and I'll give and I'll give and I'll give. Yep. And eventually it's sort of, you know, you burn the candle at both ends because you don't feel fulfilled in what you're doing because you're not there running their race. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if someone was to come into your gym and you're working out with them and you see them sweat every day and you can hang out with them and you're there with them, mm. you know, when it's, uh, you know, when my clients are from, you know, as I said, all around the world and they're on, you know, the other side of this country or something like that. You speak to them over Zoom or on the phone and you have your, your weekly contact and, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of contact as well and that's why they get their results. Mm. But because you don't share their sweat, it's a, different, yeah. it's a different feeling and that's something I've had to deal with in the last six months when these people are getting tremendous results. I had to try to find that fulfillment in myself and that confidence to go, no, listen, the program does work. Mm. You are changing people's lives. Uh, just because you're not there with them, it, it was just a growth. It was just yeah. a, a self-worth issue that um, is constantly being worked on mm. um, and I have to constantly remind myself that it's that it's okay, you know? Yeah. It's it's interesting concept. Um, 
you know, people often talk about that balance between being selfish to be selfless, you know, and giving, 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 but then how much are you actually taking away from yourself? Did you find that when you were going through that, as you say, that stage of growth that you were burning the candle at both ends, like you were going through some, some I don't know, times of stress or like, were you, was there any part in your life that you can look back now with hindsight and go, maybe the reason that I had this approach to my business was because something was going on here? It's, it's interesting, right? So yeah. everything you know, where I'm at now, mentally, sp- uh, spiritually, emotionally, physically, like everything has to happen for a reason. For sure. You know, and you have to, you have to have these burnout periods to realize, okay, how can I prevent this from happening last time yep. or next time? And, it, you know, Perry, she's, uh, she's my absolute rock. Uh, she's incredible. Absolutely mm. love her to death. She's my, she's my soulmate, right? And, you know, I'll that, be. That's your mum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, my beautiful, beautiful girlfriend. Yep. And um, <laughs> the pause just before just girlfriend, there was good to clarify. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, like, and, and you probably might know this, dude. Like, when you work by yourself, um, you know, for a couple of days, you get in your own head, mm. and it's very easy to get into your own head. And so, I would be working on this, what I would think would be an awesome idea. Mm. It's like, oh, I'm going to do this to the membership side and do this and do this. And I've got to create all these new video series and all of this stuff. And I'd spend three days on it, right? Staying up late, burning the candle at both ends. And anyway, I'd present the final idea to Perry. Mm -hmm. She's like, what? 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 Why why wouldn't you just do it this way? I'm like, (laughs) duh! Fuck you. If someone had just told me <laughs> yeah. that three days ago, I would have not have done Wait, that yeah, and wasted yeah. three days and I would have gotten away with a lot less work, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, listen, in hindsight, I think you need to always learn from your, you know, your actions. Mm. And, um, you know, I'm very in tune with, with myself. And uh, a while ago, uh, I had this really overwhelming feeling that I needed to meditate. Okay. And it's different, you know, yes, I I meditate and for for years I've done mindful mindfulness and I was just like, it just wasn't hitting my spot. I wasn't resonating with it at all. It was sort of a chore. I didn't feel relaxed afterwards. Mm. It just, it just, for some reason just was no longer me. And what it was is, is again, it's not that mindfulness meditation is, is bad at all. It helped me get to a stage and it's just like mentors, right? You don't need a, a coach or mentor. If, if you're a PT out there and, and you've got clients from three years ago, you're probably not doing a great job, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and yes, there's some merit to, you know, there's, there's more than just the training and the results for PT and stuff like that. So don't take it too literally. But, yep. you know, if um, – where was I going with that? Oh, yeah, uh, mindfulness meditation. It got me to a point, but it's no longer me. And so I had this mm. overwhelming feeling that um, I needed to change it up. And so I inquired about some Vedic meditation or Vedic meditation. Um, you know, all the gurus and, you know, the famous people talk about TM mm-hmm. and, you know, it's the one to go for and stuff like that. And, and Vedic meditation is exactly the same. It's just with a lot less uh, ego attached and a lot less um, uh, price mm. involved, you know. And so I sought out the best uh, Vedic teacher in Melbourne and I went to her house for four days and, um, and she taught me all the techniques of, of Vedic meditation. I've got my own uh, personal mantra now that wow. it's very sacred to me. And um, it's just, uh, it's absolutely a game changer um, in how I approach everything. And it's, you need these little tools because everything is a tool, right? And, and through life, we build up these tools if your eyes are open. And this tool right now is really just got me to the next level. It's mm. like when you're building a house and you go from using a hand saw mm. to an electric saw mm-hmm. or a power saw. I'm, clearly, I'm not a builder. <laughs> um, <laughs> to a nail, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, you know, you, you upgrade to a, you know, a more powerful one and things like that. And, yeah. and this upgrade that I've had in this meditation has just totally redefined what success means to me and, and how I run my life mm. you know and it's it's so interesting dude that what you think is important really isn't mm. you know these to-do lists that we have that at the end of the day uh, just you know when we talk on a hormonal response these to-do lists just release dopamine which yeah. is our, one of our feel-good hormones and so we feel like we're successful if we cross off our to-do list mm-hmm. but once you cross off the to-do list what's next yeah more to-dos yeah 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 you find it yeah you know it's like it'll never be fulfilled no exactly and so 
this, uh, I, I completed this uh, meditation thing about two weeks ago. And since then, I've gotten rid of my to-do lists. Um, I've really just narrowed down onto, you know, what's really important to mm. me. And it's just the simple things in life. Mm. Uh, a while ago, I, I went very minimalist. Um, it was after my Adventure Fit Everest trip, actually, yep. where I came back and, and uh, for three months, uh, took everything out of my room and then for three months whatever I needed um, I I wore and I just kept that in my room anyway after three months I ended up with like six t-shirts three pairs of shorts yeah um, you know and this is coming from having a full double wardrobe full of clothes mm. and, you know with 10 different colognes and 27 dildos <laughs> 27 well <laughs> that's what I counted yeah. <laughs> that's what I've kept 28, 28 sorry yeah. <laughs> and so um, you know and, and that was that was really good that made you made me simplify things but yeah. as time you know it's like when you clean your car it's really good and it's really fresh and you can mm. breathe and you feel light mm. But over time, you know, you leave the drink bottle there and some receipts and it starts to get dirty again. And yep. It starts to, to weigh you down. And so, um, and so this meditation was just an incredible reboot to go, what's important? Mm. And now I'm looking around this house and go, this is, you know, things are starting to creep back. You know, if I want to either save money or just clear the clutter, mm. you know emotionally and, and spiritually just get rid of shit mm, mm. Um, and I've even just leaned out the business you know so I got rid of a, a staff member that at the end of the day was probably just floating my ego right you know um, to say I had a, a staff member and, and listen she was great she was a VA it was all a learning experience I needed to test what it was like working with someone overseas um, that's not a client and so, uh, and, and that I learned a lot, but realized I need someone onshore mm. who's going to share my same vision and, and I've got, you know, Perry working for me now as well, which mm. is great. So yeah, man, it's just a, a lot has been going on. Um, super exciting. Lots of growth, dude. Lots of growth. Mm. So, uh, yeah. I love it that, I mean, the growth isn't just, and it never has been, you know, from the moment we really became close mates, it, it's, it's growth, you know, as I know, when you say it, it's, it's, it's never a just business growth or just doing this now, you know, it's gro- growth fundamentally to you as it is with me is yourself. It's oh, personal dude. growth, you know. Yeah. Um, it's funny when you say that word dopamine, man, I, I just, I, I have a very interesting like take on that. And I think it's really interesting to like, again, look at the difference between the true self, you know, your consciousness mm. and your, who you are um, as a spirit and then your ego. And we're getting right to the spiritual realm here as we always were going to Love it. but you think of it you think of the way we've evolved in this human form you know mm. as a way to survive up until 2018 and everything is so I've just kind of like hit the nail on the on the head right there but everything that we are physically and through the monkey mind and then through our ego and our identity is a way to survive you know so every little interaction we have when we're, when we're lost in thought and when we're using our body, we're trying to survive. We're assessing the world for danger. You know, we're making sure that, you know, if our anxiety is manifested, why is that, a, you know, am I hungry? Like, am I, is there someone that's going to hurt me? All this sort of thing, you know. And hormones to me, again, it's a survival mechanism. You have this thing like dopamine and people are obsessed and addicted like to the nth degree with getting a dopamine release. They don't even know that that's what they're craving, but that's what they're craving. You know, they are craving the feel-good hormone. Mm. But it's amazing that, and by no means am, am I anywhere close to being enlightened at all. But I, I'm, I'm open to meditation. I love meditation. I'm trying to find my way back into doing uh, mushrooms again and, and MDMA for meditative purposes. And you look at all these things in your life when you take on that perspective and you go, wow, so many things I have in my life that I do in my life habitually recognize whatever uh, to satisfy this like need to feel good all the Mm. time you know it's just it's very interesting and then you know this this whole you know at the end of the day we are just reflecting light yeah right and so you can go real freaking woo woo and go well what is success why am I working for this but then it's like we we're trapped or we live in this world that actually has solids and mm. we're not just you know a spiritual being which which we are but we have this outer shell that True. needs to be transported somewhere through this earth and so then it's like it's finding that balance of yes we're just air mm. and uh 
you know, versus, you know, I want to be someone in this world and I mm. want to make a difference and it's fine. That balance um, is the hard part. Do you think it's difficult to want to make a difference and, oh, sorry, do you think it's difficult to make a difference whilst maintaining that understanding that, you know, we are not what thought is telling us? <laughs> it's a tough one. <laughs> um, well, I, you, you can. It's been proven. You know, yeah. there's there's some huge influences out there that are, you know, helping to shape the, you know, the world at the moment. Um, mm. It's interesting, you know, and it just comes down to self-belief and, and your purpose. Mm. You know, some people's purpose is, is they have to change the world and spread their message. Um, past, present and the future, it's going to be there. Mm. Uh, is it is it my message? Is it my driving force right now? No, my driving force is... Um, a little bit different than than spreading spreading that global message. But mm. what about yourself? Well, it's actually really interesting. I think that like the polarity of good and evil as well is also very important as well. Mm. I think um, if everybody knew what their if everyone was their true authentic self, and I, like I have nothing to no merit to stand on here, you know. Um, but if everyone was their true authentic self and there was just good, 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 there'd be no comparison and that would always counteract to the yin and yang and we'd find bad again because mm-hmm. you, you wouldn't be able to recognize, you know? I was just I just had a thought when you were saying, you know, that stuff about, you know, people all have their place in the world. I wonder if like Hitler had his place in the world of being Hitler so that we knew and we learnt to like, fuck man, don't mm. ever do that shit again, mm. you know? Yeah. Well, how do you know you've had a bad day? Well, I, the only way I know I've had a bad day is based on the comparison of when I've had a really good day. Mm, that's mm. it, man. Yeah. That's it. I heard that recently and I, I really resonated with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. And so what did you learn from this? Uh, ex- let's explore the, uh, the recent meditation experience. Well, I actually, I actually did it. So I signed up for a 10-day Vipassana retreat, which mm. is a, uh, a 10-day silent meditation and it happens all around the world. And there's one here in Melbourne in May that I've got. And so it's a... Uh, you lock yourself off to the world and um, mm. you're in with a group of people, but you're not allowed to make any eye contact. So no eye contact for 10 days, no note taking for 10 days. Uh, first meditation in the morning is at 4.30. Last meditation is at uh, about 8, 8 p.m. Wow. And, um, you know, you, you do different forms of meditation. There's, you know, Vipassana is a style, just like mindfulness, just like Vedic. Um, and so... I went there or I've signed up for that because I've done ayahuasca twice. Mm. Uh, I've done DMT numerous times and I don't know what I'm searching for, but I think this evolution of self growth, I think you, for me where I'm at, I can't deny that. Yep. And so something will come about sitting by yourself for 10 days. Yep. The people that I've heard that have done it say the first two days are first day is exciting yeah second day you're, you're, you're pretty freaking relaxed yeah all you've been doing is meditating for two days <laughs> first day is like I'm fucking spiritual yeah second day is like dude I'm sick yeah <laughs> third third day starts to get hard four five six seven eight is hell yeah you know you haven't spoken a word um, I can't even remember what I did ten days ago yeah so on paper this this ego that I have is saying yep you'll do it mm. that's my front ego mm. Uh, also, my back ego is shit scared. I am really shit scared of potentially walking out before the 10 days is mm. up. Mm. And I think it's going to be really interesting as a test of character and life of when things get uncomfortable. You know, what do you do? What do you naturally do? I don't know if you've, if you've ever done yoga before. Yep. So when we do yoga, sometimes when you hold, you know, certain poses, um, it gets really uncomfortable. And then just notice, what do you do? Like, do you change position Mm. do you shrug your shoulders a bit do you take an extra breath do you try and move out of that uncomfortable position because that's an instant reaction for you yeah or do you sit there and go actually what do i need to learn right now Mm. what what am i trying to run away from in Mm. life and so i think when you force yourself into these retreats because i think that's when you know the growth will happen when you've really got to isolate yourself and immerse yourself in this Mm. um I think that's where the growth is going to happen. So I'm really shit scared that, you know, potentially I'll, I'll run away. And, and then, you know, you look at yourself, do you, do you see that as a failure or, or, or what, what happens from there? And this is all the unknown, right? And yeah. This is the funny thing on reflection. Like, you know, I'm forecasting the unknown. What does meditation do? Yeah, well, it keeps you in the present. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's just all of, being in the present. <laughs> all of this growth, man, like I'm super interested to find, I shouldn't say find, to explore 
what character comes out um, at the end of the 10 days. Yeah. Because ayahuasca is completely different to what I expected. Completely different. I think I went there wanting to find who I am mm. and came out not, you know, didn't get that answer that I was hoping for simply for the fact that the answer I was hoping for isn't me. Yeah, right, yeah. And ah, so right. you have this expectation. When you actually turn that expectation into appreciation, your life totally changes. Mm. And so I went in this into ayahuasca with all this expectation of just give me the answer, tell me what I'm meant to do. And you hear all these stories and you have all these crazy visualizations, but they're so subtle. Um, they're so subtle that upon reflection, it really brought me back to the simple things in life. Mm. Um, and then you do, I do, when I say you, I, I talk about myself here. Yep. I do DMT and, well, you know, again, what, what am I trying to search for? Um, what is it that I need to tap into? What's inside of me that yep. needs to, to come out? Yep. Um, and that's all it is. We have all these different layers and we have on the polar ends of the spectrum, we have our front ego that thinks you're better than what you are and it's there to protect you. Yep. And that's the, uh, you know, the, the ego a lot of people associate with. But we also have a back cover, which is our back ego, and that's there to also protect you. And that doesn't think that you're better than what you are mm. or you're good enough. Mm -hmm. So you go back to school days. You know, you know the answer, but you don't want to put your hand up because you don't want to get it wrong. Mm. You might get it wrong. You've got a social it's media true. post. Yeah. Right? I want to put it up. But I'm worried about the judgment, the mm. criticism, you know, so I might put something else better up. And it's, you know, a lot of people are out there floating their front ego all the time, but both ends of your ego are there to protect you. They're forcing us to fit in, aren't they? Mm. Yeah. And so inside these two ends of your ego, you have so many different layers and um, it's just, I don't even know where I was going with that. No, no, it's... It's just it's just a stream of consciousness, really. Yeah, mm. it's it's funny, man. I'm like I'm totally fucking one hundred percent on the same path with you here, and it, it's very interesting. I, I've always felt very grateful um, to have been thrust into this podcasting, or I guess this content experience with mm. with yourself and Bill. Um, you know, for people that I did, you know, and obviously still do look up to as very close friends of mine. But you had developed further in life, and I was a young kid. And the best thing that you both did was you never, you never let me just be me. And you, I mean, you especially, man, you always, you always played devil's advocate with me because, and I really do believe some, you know, whether it's a spiritual sense or something, because you, you felt there was something there, you know, that like we could, we could really, um, you know, grow together as mates, you know, and you're talking about this front and back end ego. And we've you, you and I have spoken about this all the time, you know, but it, it was that thing for me, you know, that I, I just rec I can just see it all the time is that, you know, whenever there was like a quiet conversation or something, I'd, I'd make a joke you know, or I'd do something like that. And, you know, I won't deny that I do love making jokes anyway. Mm. I do just feel like I'm a naturally funny person or like being, you know, I love a good sense of humor, but it was doing it for the wrong reasons. Mm. You know, it was, do it was an escape. It was a, a, an inability to just be calm in the silence, you know, bathe in the moonlight and all this sort of thing. Do you, do you feel like you can now look back on points in your life where you were doing things to satisfy some, some side of your ego? Or? Oh, dude, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Even this conversation right now. Yeah. You know, ev everything is on some part of your ego, considering, you know, two minutes ago I was saying that, that almost everything is, is ego in mm. this world. When you step outside your ego and you can just be your spiritual self. Mm. Um, but then again, saying that I'm super spiritual has ego attached yeah, to it. You yeah, know? we can't so, win, eh? No, so it's really just which layer of ego are you playing and which one do you want to play at? Yeah. Um, and I think that's where the Vipassana will, you know, try to shine light on, mm. you know, which, which is my true self and mm. what part of the spectrum. It doesn't matter if it's front, doesn't matter if it's back, doesn't matter if it's anywhere in the middle. But then I will have the choice of going, okay, if it's, if it's at the front or at the back, where do I want it to be? Who mm. do I want to be? Yeah. Um, what, How can I use that? What do I want to be? Absolutely. And in the past, there's been huge amounts of ego, you know, from, from when you're an athlete and, and running your own business to, to now saying that, you know, I'm changing people's lives all around the world. Mm. You mm. know, there's still ego attached everywhere. For sure. Of course. And I think it would be impossible for us not to, as we live in this human shell, mm. you know, you can't, we, we, we can't, we can't be, um, I think we just have to recognize that, that there are some, there is going to be some form of ego that always exists when the things we do and the people 
we speak to and what we say, but that's okay. You know, it's I okay. see, I see ego though, as everyone's got it. As long as your ego is not to boost your ego by deflating someone else. Of course. D- yes. There's, so I hold extreme ownership yep. for everything that happens. Uh, it, it's my fault. Yeah. If a butterfly dies out there, it's my fault because I wasn't there to save it. Mm-hmm. So it's really, it's really great. You know, Perry and I, <laughs> we never, we never freaking argue at all because it's always our fault. Mm. That is our ego taking responsibility. Yeah. That is not our ego passing blame. Mm. There's a big difference there. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So yep. we could share huge amounts of ego. Mm. You could say you're wrong and that's your ego. Mm. And I could say, mate, it's totally my fault. Mm. You know, I, I wasn't there for you or, um, you know, if, if what's something bad, you know, if you get hit by a car or something like that, it's, it's not the driver's fault. It's mine Yeah, because I ha- you know, I shouldn't have been walking on the road or I could have been on the other side of the footpath. Mm. Like that whole extreme ownership. Yeah. That's where, that's where I live in a place of. And I think, you were to point your finger out um, away from you, the solution is always away from you. But yeah. if you were to point the finger inside, the solution is inside. Mm. Uh, yeah, look, I think that's really interesting as well. I mean, lying is something that I used to make a lot of little white lies and things. Um, you know, why was I late? Why was I not at school on time? All these sorts of things. You know, some, some of them were kind of just habitual, things like that. You know, and I'm talking late teenager, you know, um, that sort of thing. But... Lying is an interesting one to me as well. And I put a post out about it recently because I just wanted to hear other people's thoughts. Lying, depending on anywhere at the spectrum in terms of like, you know, lying because you're late or lying because you fucking murdered someone, whatever, is is taking away that um, ability to grow because you're not being honest with yourself, mm. you know? So I think that lying to get out of a situation is easy in the short term, but it's not right because you're putting this roof on your growth be like, hey, I mean, when I lie and I say something like, oh, fuck, man, I'm so sorry the traffic was super late, you know, something that I've said many times, you know. The traffic was super late. The traffic was super late. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I clearly know you're lying when you can't even get the sentence right. <laughs> well, mate, the traffic, was super, the traffic was late. Hang on, does that make sense? The no. traffic was late? What am no. I trying to say? You're the late cars. because of the traffic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, but I used to say something like, you know, I was late because of the traffic or whatever it was. And it takes away that thing of like, well, hang on a second. I could have just woken up earlier. Exactly. You know, Extreme I should have been ownership. able to figure this out. Extreme ownership. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Have you read Jocko Willink's book, Extreme Ownership? Uh, I did. I didn't resonate with it. Yeah. Uh, everyone was like, oh my God, it's the best. And, you know, that's cool. I just didn't. I thought it was okay. Mm. You know, it's like when you go and see a movie though, everyone's like, oh my God, this is the best movie. It's yeah. Like, yeah. Dude, yeah. it's just porn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's good, but... <laughs> I've seen it before. Yeah, yeah. No, um, I, I completely agree as well. I so, resonated with the principle, but the book yeah. of you know stories about what happened in the mm. military and stuff. Not taking mm. anything away. It was just yeah. the principle was great. Yeah, absolutely. Could have been a sentence for me, dude. Take extreme ownership. Man. Oh yeah, cool. I understand. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, yeah, for sure. So, DMT, mate. This mm. is something I'm trying to get into a little bit more now and just understand this. Mm. You know from my. Um, past experience, last experience with mushrooms, that there's a little bit of fear that still resonates, not anywhere near as much as it used to, but just that what could happen of being so out of control. I've read up a lot of stuff about DMT and how it can be some, for some people, very terrifying, you know, puts you at one with like all these sorts of things, you know, what was it? Did you ever experience anything negative? And when I say negative, not in a sense of like, it was good in the end because it was growth. You know, mm. but negative in the sense of like, whoa, this is very overwhelming. No. Never got that, eh? No, that's probably not the answer you wanted. Um, mm. my, my view on it all is, is could be slightly skewed to the average Joe wanting to do it, you mm-hmm. know? So I definitely want to put this out there that, you know, I'm not doing DMT every, every day, no. every month or anything like that. It's, it's a very spiritual thing for me. It's a very spiritual practice yep. where, you know, I... Um, uh, you know, I, I say a little bit, you know, to the medicine before I before I consume it. It's very sacred. I do a meditation and, and things like that. So I, I use it in a different sense. And, and so whatever comes, and this is my whole view, like whatever comes is perfect. Mm-hmm. 
Like where you are right now on your journey of wherever you are wanting to get to is perfect. Mm. Um, and so it's, you know, whatever I see is is whatever was meant to happen. And that's the whole thing with going to ayahuasca because I had this expectation of, oh, oh I should have seen this. I wanted to see this. Um, but, yeah. But everything that you need to see right now is what you're seeing. Yeah. If you're not seeing it, if you're not hearing it, you don't need to hear it right mm. now. You don't need to see it right mm. now. Because 80% of the stuff that we see is made up. Yeah. In fact, that our, our brain is constructing these images that we've seen in the, in the past and we're seeing different shades of light that reflects a guitar over there. Mm -hmm. right? And so our brain goes, oh, that's a guitar. And so we can be tricked into seeing things that we don't, it isn't actually there. True. And you'll you'll know this from you know um, people's statements uh, when you know a crime or yeah. something like that. Everyone will have misinformed judgments, and they'll swear black and blue that that's yep. what they saw. The dog was eight foot tall. Yeah, exactly. And then you know you even look at things like uh, make making a murderer. How they 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 put this image into someone's head, and they mm. said yes, um, then I did that. Mm. And so. What you need to see right now is exactly what you need to see. Mm. So if I have that attitude going in, I, I, I trust that the medicine will give me the answer that I need. And for me, it's not the visuals. Mm. For me, it's the release of tension, of stress, of overwhelm. And once you can start to empty that, you can then start to fill back up. And it's just like when you go and earth yourself. I don't know if you've ever been stressed. Have you, you do, do you do much grounding and earthing? How do you mean? Do you ever touch earth? Uh, yeah, actually. I walk around in bare feet almost all the time. And mm. I make sure that I just... It makes me feel more centered. Mm. Awesome. So if anyone out there listening, right, and you haven't touched earth, have a think about... So we are just trillions of cells. Well, protons and neutrons and electrons. And we create this same electronic... Um, field and an energy is lightning, right? We're, we're both made up of electrons and what lightning needs to do to de-earth itself or, or to release the energy, mm. um, these negative charges, you know, it needs to come down and earth itself. And just like humans, we need to earth ourselves as, as well. And so when people, um, you know, in a typical day-to-day -day life, they, they wake up and they put their, their socks on carpet and then they put their shoes on and then they'll walk to the car, car to work, work to gym, <laughs> gym to home. Uh, they'll take off their socks, sorry, their shoes, maybe put on slippers or something yep. like that. Um, and then they go to sleep and they sleep off the floor, you know, and it could be uh, days, weeks or months before people actually get their bare feet on soil yeah. or in sand or on grass, and especially during the winter time, mm. right? Um, so when we have all of these build up of these negative charges, this creates a whole heap of worry and overwhelm and stress and it can in impact our sleep, our moods, our libido, our clarity, our energy. Um, and so sometimes I just get an overwhelming feeling that I just tap into to go, okay, cool. It's time to do some DMT. I need to learn something. From yep. Or it's time to earth, or it's time to do meditation. Boom, book myself into 10 days. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, or do a course and book myself into 10 days. So, yep. um, listen, man, I, it's, it's simply a tool. And yeah. when you're building a house, you don't always use a hammer. No. You know, you use a saw and a screwdriver and a chippy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and someone else. You get someone else to do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, you know, just, just because DMT is there, it's just like with any drug, you know, just because it's there doesn't mean you have to go and use it. No, that's right. And yeah. so I think if you just use it cautiously, it caus cautiously. Um, chippy. Chippy. Absolutely. <laughs> just use a, a chippy. You got a budget for them. Yeah, that's right. Um, and you know, it does have consequences, you know, you can't just, you can't just do it and, and well, you can just do it. And go, well, that was sort of nothing. Yeah. Or you could do it and you could sit with it and yeah. you could reflect and go, right, what is the underlying lesson here? Yeah, definitely. You know, and we release, if you've done ayahuasca or, or even DMT or any plant medicine, you release in different ways. Mm. Some people vomit. Some people um, have diarrhea. Some mm. people yawn. Some people burp. Some people have the hiccups. Some people cry. Mm. Um, the, our body is releasing in some sort, some sort of way. So sometimes I've just had DMT 
I'm not even sad, right? But your eyes just start leaking water. Mm. It's like, okay. And then the first time this happened is like, am I sad? Mm. What am I sad about? I'm actually in such a great place right now. Are these happy tears? Well, what is this? And then you sort of just reflect and it's just like after this, you know, once you've had a good cry, you know, it, regardless from DMT or ayahuasca or mm. anything like that, it's a lot of emotion let go. Yeah. And then you can be open to new learnings and lessons. Yeah, definitely. Do you know, it's really interesting, mate. I, I've recently, um, so I'm, I'm just about finished my audio book for, for my book and the book's done. So it's coming out very soon, which is really exciting. And I, I was reading back through um, chapter four, which is talking about uh, my experience with the psilocybin. And I was looking back on it because I just wrote it in terms of like, this is what happened then and this is what happened. This is what I experienced and, you know, these vibrations are what happened next. And I was kind of looking, but this is the first time I've really read my book as it was, as, it, as the experiences that played out in my life. And I looked back on that experience with psilocybin and, and I didn't mean to, I didn't, I did not mean for this to happen. You know, I, I, I did it for a party, you know, I'd been doing shrooms, um, been doing psilocybin you know, multiple times. And I was always just for a party, you know, I was fucking with it essentially, you know, and I did this experience and then all these things played out in my life, mental health issues here, people unraveling over here, moving away from these people, volatile situations here and there. And I truly believe that what it showed me was that upon the I mean, now as a, as a 25 year old, you know, and I, this experience happened seven years ago mm. upon reflection, mm. I'm looking back on it and I'm going, holy fuck, it showed me all the shit in my life that I needed to figure out. It, t- it took me to seven years, you know, it took me seven years ahead. And I needed to learn about, you know, a greater sense of self-awareness. I needed to can get rid of those people out of my life. I needed to make sure that the dreams that I was following were true to who I was. Mm-hmm. I needed to do all these things. And it was a tough road because the anxiety that came from it was was at times very, very, very stressful, you know, but it was... So important, so mm. important. You know, you wouldn't be here right now. Absolutely, would not be here mm. for sure. Yep, I'd still be, I, I'd still be playing footy. I'd still be, I'd still be doing all these sorts of mm. things. You no, know? not to say footy's bad. Mm. Just didn't, wasn't me. You yeah. know, and um, I just find it fascinating that it it worked in that way. It did mm. you know? It really was just a tool. It was just a tool, and I didn't even mean for that to happen. Mm. You know. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see where you are in another seven years. I time. know. I was going to say. I wrote there, at the end at the a final sentence of it. You know. I, I wrote like, I think it's going to be interesting reading back on this now, this passage of writing. Um, Cause you know, I'm writing it f- thinking that I'm a somewhat authentic, more authentic person now, but I could have it. I could be so wrong in 10 mm. years time. I just don't know, mm. you know, fascinating stuff. Mm. Well, you do know, and this is a thing, dude, like what you're writing now is what you know. It's a constant growth. And this is, you know, a, a lot of fear where people are like, Oh, I don't know enough. Well, you know what you know now. Yeah. Right, so it's good enough for now. Mm. You know, mm. are you who are you comparing yourself to? Yeah. What have they done? Are they, are they fifty years older than you? Of course, they're going to be wiser. Than yeah, you, you know. Um, but yeah, man, exciting to see where you are in ten years time, twenty years time. But even dude, it's just going to manifest to you being a better father. Yeah, you know, what, I agree. what really comes down to it is is where do you want to be and who do you want to be in life? And um, something as as simple like you could tell this story. Like for example, um, when I, you know tell my story of not getting in the fire brigade, people mm. go, oh, so it's just a, just a job. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, no, it's no. not. It's not. It's, it's who I was. It's who I, my identity was That's right. for 27 years. Yep. You know, I was nothing else but. Mm. So then to have that crush and say like someone doesn't take that on. And so you saying this story of like, oh, I did, I did psilocybin. Like, I've done psilocybin. Mm. You know, I didn't think it was a massive deal. Yeah. Um, where it's a massive deal for you and yeah. it will shape your life. Yeah, definitely. Mm. That's right. And it was, yeah, absolutely. And it was one of those things, you know, uh, 2013, it was, you know, a couple of, couple of years after that psilocybin, I, um, I got barred um, from making it to the VFL and that very mm. similar to the fire brigade fucking crushed me. You mm. know, that was Tom, Tom, the budding AFL player for 20 years, 21 mm. years, mm. you know? And then I was like, whoa, shit. Who am I then? You know, yeah. because who we are really is just a construct of the thoughts that we think that we then take action on. You know, which is a very what are thoughts? Yeah, that's right. Well, go. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's a, it's it's a very, um, 
it basically it just I guess the whole overall theme of this resonates with me that like we're fucking just a, a energy through this physical shell. I mean, where, where, if, if, if I can literally change the world's perception of who I am as a person based on like thoughts that I act on, then what the fuck am I? Do you know what I mean? But your, your perception of the world and their perception of you comes from your thought. Yeah. We could look at the world right now and go, the world's fucked. Mm. It's such a bad place to live in. Mm. We could look at the world and go, the world is so opportunist right now. Mm. We have never lived in a better time. Mm. Look at all the opportunities. Look at, look at the way we connect with people. Mm. Or you could go, fuck, the world is gone. Look at the way we connect with people. Yeah. Your thoughts create your reality. It's true. It is true. And yeah. And there's that survival mechanism for it as well. You know, like when you, when you get hungry, everything you see is like, oh, like that's a bit of food there. Like, mm. You know, well, that's look, look, like tasty. You know, you just, our, we have an inability to process like what we really do need to process to actually get an objective perspective of reality, you know? Mm. And when, we, when we're thinking about different things, we only see that, you know? Mm. So right now, like I'm, I'm, in this, I'm in this very sort of, um, spiritual world. Sorry, that's that sounds a bit ridiculous. I'm very interested in spirituality right now. You know, mm. more so than I probably have been forever in my life. Mm. Um, meditation, meditating every day, constantly reading things about it. You know, intrigued by these conversations, and my world is filtered by by that sort of theme. You know, I'm looking at plants. I'm looking at things around here, and I'm just taking on that spiritual perspective. You know, mm. eight months ago, I went deep into this hole of politics. And mm. everywhere I walked, you know, I was seeing people that I assumed to be left wing, you know, people on the political, on the, on the left mm. side and mm. the people on the right side. I was seeing conservative conservatism everywhere, you know, and it was just, it's just fascinating to see that. I mean, I, I'm assuming that when I was 18, 19 and I was very in the AFL mindset, everything I would look at would be like, oh, okay, I could pick that up for reps. I could get stronger there. Mm. I could like mm. go out there and play on the, you know, just fascinating. Ever, uh bought a car like for for example um yeah. the next uh i've been looking at cars not that i'm buying a car but i'm like oh cool i reckon you know if i was to buy one what would i what would i look for and all of a sudden i just saw a golf uh volkswagen golf like holy crap i like that car yeah. <laughs> and then i've seen it a hundred times a day yeah. since then it's like <laughs> yeah. you get what you you look for yeah you yeah know? you gotta get you gotta stop being in the golf shop though mate oh i know <laughs> <laughs> but it's true it's true i mean it's a law of attraction, isn't it? Mm. You really do. You really do. I uh, I wrote down my ideal girl very specifically. I wrote down exactly what I wanted to say to her when I'd roll over and kiss on the cheek, good morning. You know, I wrote down everything. And my current girlfriend, not girlfriend is that to a T, mm. you know? And that that's not even weird to me because mm. it's like, well, you know, that was a manifestation. Who knows what was going on in her life for that to happen? You know, this, this happens to people every single day, mm. whether they recognize it or not. And that, yeah. Yeah. yeah well, at the end of the day, spirituality is just another form of religion, right? And, yeah. You know, there's ego to say that you're spiritual. There's ego to say that I'm, I'm ex-religious, mm. right? But it's, it's just giving you, um, you just acknowledge that there is a higher power. And whether we call it energy, mm. whether someone calls it God or Allah. Yep. Allah. Or, or Buddha. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry if Buddha. I offend anyone. I really don't know Allah, that. Jesus. Yep. Um, and so it just gives you hope and everyone's like, well, you know, how are you so spiritual? It's like, well, just the way I like to sort of define it is just really tapping into your intuition mm. and, you know, actioning your intuition. Yep. A lot of people don't sit down and have the time to reflect. And when you sit down, you actually stop and you reflect on what you want or what you don't want, mm. what is poison in your life and what is medicine in your life, mm. then you can start to understand and start to move to the places that are going to help you rather than hinder you. Mm. And so, you know, just check in once a day, you know, whether it be through meditation, whether it be, you know, Perry and I each night when we're lying in bed, we go over our lessons learnt for the day. Mm. Like that constant growth and reflection um standing in the sun yeah mm -hmm. absolutely and i think we um i think as a per like we all want to be happy mm. you know in life for as much of it as we can and i think that that understanding of the law of attraction takes on that responsibility of you know that self-responsibility of going okay 
I'm pretty fucking upset at the moment. Like, well, how much of that are you playing into? Like, mm. are you someone that always beeps at someone for, you know, like on the road? Like, are you someone that always like lies, you know, doing all this? Sort of, like, we need to understand, I believe, mm. you know, at least I do, that that has a big part to play in how I see my world that I, that I live in, you know? Mm. And I mean, even just anecdotally, like, like to be super, to just talk in the most layman way possible, the happier I've become, the more I've gotten into this, like the better my life's become, yeah. you know? So fuck, like it doesn't even matter mm. if there's anything to it or not. I'm just a happier person. That's it, dude. You know? Yeah. There's a book out there, uh, Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. And uh, he's a Holocaust survivor. Mm. And um, it's all about the mindset. It wasn't about actually necessarily the, the Holocaust and the war. It's about his mindset throughout the whole um, you know, duration of, of his time in, in Auschwitz. And uh, he was just saying that you could see people give up hope and yeah. faith. And within two to three days, they had died from yeah. an unexpected death. Mm. And so it was this this will to live, you know, we have this will and uh, this hope for happiness, right? But he said, when he got out of the other side, he, you know, in the camp, he's like, we can't wait to get out of this camp. It's just going to be so much happy. Like happiness is just going to be everywhere we see or everywhere we look. Mm. They get outside of the camp and they still see, um, you know, I was going to say unhappiness. Yeah. They still see uh, torture and, and, suffering. And, and suffering, absolutely, because people then wanted to get back at the Germans. They're like, well, what, yeah. what are you going to do now for revenge? Yeah. He's like, no, I didn't get out to take revenge. You know, I got a way to escape this. And, it's, and it goes back to do a full circle of what we talked about before. Mm. You get what you search for. Yeah, you absolutely do. Mm. Yeah. And it's, 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 a very, it's, a, it's a very volatile but very true concept, you know, because mm. it's like, well, shit, like, I don't even know what I'm searching for, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's 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 great. I love it. What's um what's been on your mind lately anyways, you know, in taking away from the spiritual realm then? Man, um tapping into getting out in nature. Okay. Really really have and this is again like on reflection like everyone has these little thoughts, right? And and if you if you can sweep it across, you know, out of your mind for a second. If it keeps coming back, I think you've got to act on that. Yeah. And for me, it's really getting back to nature and I really want a, a place with some chickens. And, oh, yeah. you know, really get and live off the land for a bit. Mm. So that's sort of been in my thoughts. But otherwise, dude, man, it's uh, going back to dude the- Dude, man. Dude, man. <laughs> otherwise, dude, G'day. man. Dude, man. <laughs> it's, dude, man, uh, all hurt. <laughs> going back to, to business, dude. I, I, yeah. I fucking love, love what I do. So mm. um, that's my growing passion and seeing that grow rapidly is, is exciting. Mm, mm. And do you still, you still, did you still go to the gym? Doing yes. physical like strength training and stuff? Yes. How's that changed? Has that changed a little bit recently? Or? Uh, Last time I spoke to you, I was doing like 48 seconds worth of training. Minimum and, effective dose. Yes. Dude, it was great. Yeah. Fucking, man, I live the minimum effective life. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> with maximum results. <laughs> yeah. No, listen. Orgasm in three seconds. <laughs> oh, that was good. Good for you. See ya. Well, <laughs> you know, it's efficient, isn't it? It's true. <laughs> no, so, and, and this is the uh, whole thing, like... um what are you doing it for? Identify what your outcome is. And for me, it was to save time. You know, uh, for me, it was to, to prove something to myself and to really test the theory and to, um, you know, really prove that working with your DNA has, or is so fucking powerful. Yep. And for me, I was, I was skeptical at the start, you know? And so I'm like, right, if I'm going to do this, um, you know, I'm not competing anymore. I'm, I'm open for change yep. and I'm open if it, if it doesn't work. I've got nowhere to be. Yeah. Cool. We'll just test it out. Mm. So I worked and, you know, it was incredible. The results speak for themselves. Um, and then, you know, is, is it exciting training? No. Mm. It's fucking really boring. Mm. Does it get results? Yeah. So, but how long can you go through the monotonous process of, of being super boring? Yeah. Um, Yes, it's 36 minutes a week. And people are like, oh my God, you first world problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Complaining yeah. about getting in shape for 36 yeah, minutes a week, yeah. you know. Um, but, you know, there comes to it's a... It's relative, a, mate. Yeah, it, yeah it, it comes to a point where you get the results. You're like, cool, tick it off the list. It, it, it works. Um, but maybe maybe I don't value getting time back in my life as much as I value, you know, community. Yeah. And so, you know, I started doing something different and, and, you know, now I'm just doing some group classes and just doing some basic strength work. I still do the minimum effective dose. Yep. Um, and then anything I get on top of that is added extra. Yeah. So, yeah. man, I'm having a lot of fun doing it um, and things come full circle. You know, it's Beautiful. just good training with people now and 
meeting new people. Mm. Finally, should we give a list of some uh, lasting words, mate? Lasting words of wisdom. What's a, what's a mantra? Oh, what do you mind? Is that something that you have to keep to yourself? Yes. Okay. Cool. Not even Perry knows. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. It's cool. very sacred. Right. Yeah. Do we all each have one? You will. You will be given one by your uh, by your instructor. Right. Yes. Okay. By your master, they call them, or your shaman, or whatever. Yep. Mm. Okay. That's something I'd love to explore. Yeah. Mm. So a mantra just means um, mind vehicle. Yeah. So the whole thing about Vedic meditation is becoming super lazy in your meditation. Thoughts are going to occur. And it's at that moment where you think that you're thinking or you realize you're thinking, you bring yourself back to your mantra. Right. And these thoughts are just little bits of stress and you're de-stressing yourself with these thoughts. Right. Um, but it's when you get trapped in these thoughts and you, you know you're thinking and you still go along with the ride, you're no longer meditating. Yep. Where mindfulness meditation, it's like I've got to focus on something. And I was just tired of focusing. Yeah. You know, I've got to focus on my breath. I've got to focus on, you know, the the air going through my nostrils. I've got mm. to focus on my bottom on this Bring cushion. it back to. Bring it back to. And at the end, I just really wasn't refreshed at all. No. Nah. And then with this, uh, with Vedic, it's 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes in the evening. Okay. And it's not about getting good at your eyes closed practice. Yep. You don't want to get good at meditation. Meditation is just whatever it is and whatever comes up for you is perfect. Yeah. Just like the DMT or the ayahuasca, yep. like any type of medicine, whatever comes up for you is perfect. Mm. It's what happens. You are, you're practicing your eyes closed practice yep. for your eyes open practice. Right. Your eyes open world and how you deal with stress yeah, in the nice. eyes open world. And so that's where I found it just truly life-changing. Mm, mm, mm. Cause mindfulness was good, right? And you bring it back to your breath it's a good before, entry, before, I think. before you, before I eat and yeah. things like that. It's good just to check in. Am I actually really yeah. hungry? Like I haven't eaten yet today. Yeah. And what's the time? It's, um, Oh, it's only 11. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got up early. It seems like it's got a lot longer. Oh, it's 8 a.m. It's only 11.30. Um, I was like, oh, it's got to be at least one o'clock. <laughs> right, but mindfulness, I'm not hungry. Yeah. Yet people would wake up and go, man, I need to eat. Because mm. that's what the world tells me I need to do. That's right. Uh, mindfulness taps you into your intuition. Mm. You know, what do you need to act on? Who do you need to let go? What do you need to do? Do you need to touch earth? Yeah. You know, just sit with yourself a bit. So that's what mindfulness Mindfulness is really good for yeah. you. Um, being mindful in how you speak to people. Being mindful on how you listen to people. Definitely. Um, and then Vedic, Vedic meditation is just is put that on steroids. Mm, mm, beautiful. Mate, I've got to go to the toilet. <laughs> mate, it's been a pleasure. It's, about, it's always a pleasure. It's always a pleasure. Thanks, brother. Thank you, mate. Cheers, and, mate. Uh, that's a wrap.